my brothers and sisters, chairman of the Sochnut, one of Israel's big heroes, Natan Sharansky, and above all, the families of our fallen. I want to tell you a story about my dear friend, my best friend. His name was Emmanuel Moreno. He was born in France, made Aliyah to Israel at the age of one in a family of Olim. They still have the French accent. And I met him on the very first day of our military service in a unit called Sayeret Matkal. It's one of the, perhaps the premier elite uh, unit in Israel. To get accepted to the unit, there's about 4,000 applicants. At the end, 23 or 25 get accepted. And we start a two-year course, which only 11, 10 or 11 finish. When I first saw Emmanuel, I didn't give him a chance. He wasn't a hero. He didn't look like a hero. He was no Brad Pitt. He wasn't the best sharpshooter. He wasn't the fastest runner. He wasn't the strongest. He wasn't the best navigator. In fact, he was below average. I didn't give him a chance. Not only did he finish the almost two-year grueling course, at the end of this course, where we only completed 11 of us, there's a special unit within the special unit, which only one or two people get accepted. I, was, I would do anything to get there. I didn't. Emmanuel did. And within this special unit, within the special unit, he rose to the very top. How can that be? How can someone so average go so far? I guess the reason is I've never met someone who tried so, so very hard. You know, at the end of every navigation that we did, could be 40 kilometers, what's that, 26 miles or so, I'd sort of slump down like everyone else, and only Emmanuel would stay up another 20 minutes to think what he did wrong, what mistakes he made, and how does he avoid making those very same mistakes again. He always tried harder. So we may have started at a bit higher point than he, and we all sort of got stronger, etc. Don't look at me today. We all got more fit, etc. But he passed us all because he tried and worked harder. But there's one more thing that I want to tell you. He also, more than anyone I ever knew, gave his entire self to Am Israel, always selfless, always giving to others. When we were all tired and someone had to make lunch, cut the potatoes and make french fries, I would sort of hide behind a tree and hope no one sees me. He would get up and do it when everyone's exhausted. That's the point where we're all tested. During the Second Lebanese War, when it ended, Sayeret Matkal sent a special mission to the depth of Lebanon to prevent Hezbollah from shooting more missiles to the north of Israel. The mission succeeded. Emmanuel was at the very front. On the way back to the helicopter, they ran into a Hezbollah ambush and Emmanuel got a bullet in his neck. He managed to say, Emmanuel is hit, Emmanuel is hit. And within minutes, he passed away. He left behind Maya and three children, Avia, Niria, and Noam Israel, a wonderful family. Emmanuel is one among 23,085 fallen that gave their lives so we can live here. But the chain goes way, way back. It goes 3,800 years back. The very place we are at right now, Latrun, thousands of years ago, right here, 
Joshua fought the, the first battles to conquer Israel and some of us died. Later on, right over here, just one minute away from here, in a place called the Maus, the Maccabees fought against the Greek and won to have an independent state. And then about 2,300 years later, right over here on this hill, there were the terrible battles of Latrun and the War of Independence. And then 19 years later, in the Six-Day War, this area was released like many others. All of us, all of you, all of us, were all part of the eternal chain that started 3,800 years ago. Every one of us is part of that chain. And if it's up to us, and it is up to every one of us, this chain will go on forever. This day is a day of sorrow, but just 24 hours from now, in one of the strange phenomena in Israel, it's going to turn into a day of happiness, the day of independence. But during those hours, and during the day of independence, while all Israelis are happy, thousands of families will not be. I just want to finish by reading a short poem written by Chana Senesh. Chana Senesh was a kibbutznikit that during World War II she parachuted into Europe to try and save Jews, was captured in Hungary by the Nazis and tortured to death. Her poem. The light of some stars reaches earth after those stars themselves are gone. The light of the memory of some people reaches us after the people themselves are not with us anymore. Those lights who twinkle in the darkness of the night show us the way we should follow.